or its other names like the Imiturian, the Empyrean, or the place where all the crazy shit and morbid thoughts go and live, or hell, just to name a few, is a parallel psychic dimension to our material physical realm. Now, that realm, briefly explain it, it's made out of pure psychic energy and is the mirror image to our physical realm. It's entirely shaped by our emotions, humans, elves, whatever. And to better say, it's entirely shaped by the emotions of living beings in the physical realm. Now, if you want to understand this, I'll have to put my nerd cap on, so get ready to learn something during this crisis we have today. So, in a nutshell, the warp is inspired and created with two real-world theories, Plato's and Young's. Plato's is called World of Formas, or Forms. You see, in Plato's theory, the physical world is not real, per se. The only thing that's real is a timeless, unchangeable idea, and those ideas are creations of a higher form. The Young's theory says that every thought, every idea, is made up of instincts, archetypes, and they manifest into symbols or forms which are known and written in our mind. Basically, everything you have thought is actually written already. How come, for instance, everybody knows that stealing is bad? How? Simple. It's written. We all know that. And we are unlocking it through the years of our lives. Now, when you combine these two, you get the warp. And the warp works like this. Every small thought or emotion that you think is not important, that is insignificant, it actually is. You see, the collective unconscious is the warp in some part. Now, the said emotion, if it's strong enough, lasts long enough and is repeated long enough, and a lot of mortals feel it, it will create an entity. So, yes, your big titty tau waifu does actually exist, it's just hidden behind some demons that want to kill or fiddle with your butthole. Well, to be precise, in the world, something exists, does not exist, and will exist all at the same time. You see, Physical laws in the warp basically are being told to fuck themselves and go cry in a corner. Gravity? Eh, it can fuck itself. Time? I'm, I never heard of it. See, that's how the warp goes. So, time in the warp flows however it feels like. If you go in there and you thought, it pa an hour has passed, right? Well, in the real world, 2,000 years have passed, and vice versa. You thought 2,000 years have passed while you were in the war, while a day or an hour passed only. Now, the warp is inhabited by four entities. Well, five, but Malal is not that important just yet. Just do not tell him that, by the way. And those four entities have the largest control in the warp. Their names are Korn, Nurgle, Zinch, and Slanesh. Now, I will explain them in detail, each and every one of them, and the Chaos Gods in general are gonna get their own separate video, but I will give you a brief rundown of what they are. So, Korn is the god of war, of bloodshed, of anger, rage. He does not care where the blood spills, only if it's spilled. He also wants skulls for a skull throne, so basically the living embodiment of skull fucking. Honestly, Korn is also the most honorable one. He won't trick you into serving him, he will give you a choice. Serve me or die. And he won't backstab you, by the way. He will just stab you in the front and the face multiple times until there is no face left. Now, Nurgle is the god of decay, of disease, of death. He is the kindest of them all. You see, he will trick you into serving him, but his followers do not get fucked a lot of times, like the other gods. He also 
well, let's say he's like a bloated, diseased frog. And basically, I like you, here's some Ebola! And that's how he works, basically. Zinch. Zinch is the god of change, of deceit, and of sorcery. He is basically a schizophrenic nerd slug that has so many plans that that plan fails, but it was planned and affects the other plans and they all fail, but just as planned because he, well, predicted it. It was planned. Yeah, Zinch is the living embodiment of the Justice Plan meme. And last but not least, it's Slanesh, the youngest of them all. Um, Slanesh is a misconcepted god. You see, Slanesh is actually the god of excess, of hedonism, of pleasure. It, he, she, it, its Apache helicopters uh, followers are paranoically possessed, like to follow perfection, and they will do whatever they can to get it. Yeah, also, he was born of the act of murder fucking by this Eldar. Yeah, um, not a good way to be born, right? Now, I said about the warp in general now, I will talk about now how it is used. You see, the warp is used most commonly as a travel mean to go from one place to another. It is traveled by voidcraft or spaceships, basically, and they use a engine called the warp drive. And that warp drive basically makes the spacecraft jump from one place to another. The action is called a jump. It, um, if you want me to give you a Lehman's way, it's it's basically faster than light travel. Now, I have to give you a perspective of how spaceships travel in the world. You see, you see, imagine the ship is a plastic bottle and you put it in the sea and it follows the current. The ship just rips open a hole and it surfs basically the tide at the wall. And usually, not, oh actually not usually, eventually it will get to its destination. Maybe. If Zinch doesn't pull any fuckeries, and you will go back to real space. Now, the warp is batshit insane, by the way. As the pictures will show you, it is literally hell. So, how do you travel through the warp apart from using the engine? Well, you need two things. You need a way to navigate, and you need to protect yourself from hell. Navigation is done by a form of abhumans, mutated humans called the navigators. As everybody knows about a little bit of 40k, the Imperium does not like mutants. So navigators are some form of exception, accepted mutants by the way. And their role is big, they're, they're very much important, they're so important that they are exempted from many laws of the Imperium, which is rare, and the Inquisition is careful not to piss them off, which is extremely rare. Now, how are they mutated? You see, they have a third eye right in the middle of the forehead, and that third eye makes them able to navigate through the warp, to see its currents, to also use as a means of communication, by the way. and. They can see the Astronomicon. Now, in a nutshell, the Astronomicon is a building, invention of the Emperor himself. It's basically like a lighthouse for the warp. There, I gave you a basic explanation. We'll get its own video. Now, you see, because of the characteristics of app humans, they're very much isolated. And they need to preserve their mutation because it gives them benefits. Now, they do not take any normal humans, because there's a chance that the mutation won't actually show up. So, they practice Sweet Home Alabama. Or better yet, inbreeding. Yeah, please YouTube, do not demonetize me, please. Wait, wait, wait. wait. This is my first video, I do not even get money. Oh, I'm safe, thank God. Oh, I mean the Emperor. Now, that I talked about the ways of how they navigate. Now, how do they protect themselves from the warp? 
when they travel? Well, they use a protection, albeit a shitty protection, that is called a Geller Field. You see, a Geller Field uses the warp as its means to power itself. It's inbuilt in the warp drive engine, by the way. And it creates a bubble of real space around it, effectively protecting the ship somewhat. But now you're asking, how is it shitty then? Well, it breaks down sometimes. And when I say sometimes, I mean a lot of times, and the law at least. And especially it's breaking down a lot more because there's a giant fucking rift splitting the galaxy in half. You can imagine how much shit storms that they're having when they travel. But oh no, there's more. You see, Nurgle found a way to fuck with the Gellerfield. You see, the Gellerfield is very much important. It protects you from the demons in the wall that have 69 ways to kill you or fiddle with you. And if it's Slanesh, well, there are more than 69 ways, boy. But how did Nurgle, well, fuck with it? He created a plague called the Gellerbox. And how does it work? Well, you see, the Gellerbox spreads throughout the generator itself, and it infects the workers who maintain those said generators. At first, the Gellerbox causes some strange dreams, and they're subtly compelled to sabotage and weaken it. Of course, they avoid that, but eventually when the time is right, when it reaches its climax, they will sabotage it. They will go frenzy and they will start to mutate into a biochemical abomination. And the generator then spawns mutants and demons endlessly. Basically, the mean suddenly demons comes real. Now, apart from warp jumping, there are other ways to travel for the warp. You see, the Eldar use a specific form of traveling that is very much safe from that from the wall. It's called the Webway. Now, the Eldar, by the way, are basically space elves, in a nutshell. Do not worry, they will get their own video where I will explain them thoroughly. You just have to know space elves. Now, the Webway is basically a gate, and it creates a pocket dimension in the wall, and it's safe to travel. It's basically a mini wall itself, their own wall that is completely safe. Now, the other way to travel through the warp is via a warp gate. You see, a warp gate is a mysterious creation because it's a tunnel that, for God knows why, it's perfectly safe to travel through the material. Completely. No demons can come through it. Nothing. Now, its, it's existence is a total mystery. Nobody knows how they were created, who they were created. They do not even know if they're natural or artificial. We only know that they're scattered throughout the galaxy and their size varies. Some allow a human-sized creature to traverse it, or another one, small vehicles, or better yet, some will let big as battle fleet ships go through it. Now, those warp gates are mostly found on planet surfaces, but it can be throughout space. Like I said, some can make ships go through them. And they connect one gate to another. It's basically a wormhole. It does not randomly spawn you there. It's connected to another gate, and you just go through it. Now, they're very much rare. And due to their rarity, the Admech, a faction in Imperium, they hide that information. And how is it hidden? Well, if you know about it, you're gonna get shot. Last, but they're not least. I want to talk about some points in the galaxy that where there's a thin border between the warp and real space. And the warp's influence is allowed to leech through it. You see, in those points, then leeching can be permanent or temporary, and its size varies. It depends if it's caused by chance, or if it's created by the actions of a chaos cult. Let me tell you this, even a temporary warp leech, a temporary thin veil, is very much dangerous. 
how is it dangerous i'm gonna give you now a example the example i'm gonna give you is from the horse heresy book horus rise the first one i'll show it in the video in that book the luna wolves went to the planet called 6319 to clear out a rebellion in the whisperhead mountains gabriel loken went in, into a cave where the border between the real space and the warp is thin and a being called Samus was there. Samus is, a bas is basically a demon. You need to know that. And Samus possessed one of the Loken's, one of the squad members called Xavier Jubal. He got possessed and he went mad and started to gun down everyone. Basically only two survived out of ten. And Killing a space marine, by the way, is very much hard. And what's worse, he took a shit ton of shots, and it took Loken to stab the fucker with a chainsaw to kill him. Killing a space marine is very much hard, but even how they, he was tough, it was very harder. Now, that wasn't the end, by the way, because after Jubal was killed, Samus then possessed the dead body of Xavier Jubal. He revived it and transformed it into a bloated and grotesque creature, as it's called. So, most likely, it was a warp spawn. Warp spawns are gonna get their own video when we talk about chaos. And there you have it. I gave you now a brief rundown of what is the warp, how it's used, and lastly, but not least, a brief rundown of the dangers of it. Alas, it will not be the end, because next video we're gonna talk about chaos itself. Until then, thanks for watching. Stay safe, stay at home, and, well, have fun.